1,500 feet above ground level, soaring between mountain peaks dotting the coastline of southeastern Greenland, viewing and observing pressure ridges built up from collisions of floating sea ice over the North Pole. These visions of the high Arctic had me feeling like more like I had fallen into a fictional chalk painting a la Mary Poppins and Bert, rather than actually living such an experience. As our fearless pilots maintained a steady speed low to the ground, for reference, we are flying 1,500 feet above our surface. Your average commercial airliner flies close to 30,000 feet. <clears throat> As they flew us and maintained that steady speed, we were viewing parts of the planet that no human could ever touch viewing a snapshot in time of the icy north that will never again look the way it looked in the instant that we passed over. I never thought that I would have the chance to experience such thrilling beauty beyond what's available in textbooks and online resources, but somehow here I was, a teacher from Colt Township, Pennsylvania, walking around an old P-3 aircraft turned airborne laboratory um, that hunted submarines in the military, Hunts hurricanes most of the time, Miss Piggy. And in the springtime of 2016, flew 16 priority science missions in the Arctic. As I tried to absorb and process the sheer beauty and extreme beauty of some of the most sensitive regions of our planet, my mind was spinning trying to figure out how I could translate this experience to my classroom. I knew I would be creating deliverables that aligned with the science content of each mission. And I knew I would be providing outreach, talks, lessons, media interviews. But how do you translate the feelings, the renewed hunger for learning, and intense responsibility toward our Earth and its sustainability back to middle and high school students at home that haven't been able to experience the same thing? I want to talk to you today about the power of experience, fulfillment as an educator, and how that fulfillment can translate into our interactions with our students. They show us time and time again, they'll take that influence and run with it if it resonates with them. They're becoming our teachers, our leaders, our world changers. And in order to best support them, we need to make sure that we're fulfilled in our work. Sometimes that comes down to finding the right opportunities outside of the classroom. In professional development opportunities, perhaps, or in adventures that align with your passions. One of the greatest pieces of advice that I received from some wise individual during my undergraduate career um, was to check yourself every two years in your work, every two years, and make sure that you're happy in what you're doing, because it'll show. And for me, I came into teaching along a non-traditional path, and at the two-year mark, I was still happy, and I loved working with my students. And I passed over that five-year mark. And eventually it was a decade, and I had changed schools along the way. But I was nervous about becoming unfulfilled in that work, becoming complacent as an educator, perhaps not the best that could be for my students, um, not giving what I was capable of giving to offer them support. So while I didn't want to leave the work I was doing, I found a point where I felt like something was missing. So I started seeking out opportunities that aligned with my content, but that also provided an opportunity to build a broader global perspective for myself. Along the way, and through lots of falling on my face, eventually I discovered my love for polar regions and realized I had a position to open up this part of our world to every student and colleague I come in contact with every day. Maybe, along the way influencing some career direction or uncovering some great idea or hidden passion in my students that would allow them to affect change for our world. <clears throat> Through an almost desperate need to explore, I found myself in a wonderfully lucky position to participate in some transformational professional development that allowed me to rediscover that fulfillment. One of those opportunities was called Polar Trek. And Polar Trek is a program supported by the National Science Foundation, NASA, and NOAA, that pairs K-12 educators with polar research teams, allows the teachers to integrate into a field campaign where the teachers can connect with their students from the field and then create materials to bring back to their communities um, to incorporate polar science education back home. 
The experience that I described in the beginning was a glimpse into my Polar Trek experience, based in Greenland, flying along with NASA's Operation Ice Bridge. The largest airborne survey of Earth's polar ice, equipped with a suite of remote sensing tools that allowed us to collect data on priority glaciers and regions of sea ice. On May 3rd, 2016, I flew my first science flight with the Ice Bridge team. And as we connected and chatted with students virtually from our online platform in the air, we dropped down to that 1,500 feet and started collecting data along the North Pole transect. And in that powerful moment, I was taken not only by the beauty of our planet, these regions of our Earth that have been letting us know about the threat of climate change for decades, but also by the sheer technology that had literally kept all of us safe as we flew low over crevasse fields and deep ice streams carved out by meltwater on its way to the sea. The aircraft itself was a feat of engineering, an integral part of the data collection puzzle, which helps us understand our dynamic home planet a little better each day. So, as I tried to absorb this wonderful, amazing place, I realized there, there was so much more available to us than what we could see with our eyes. See, we were trying to uncover the story that was held within the ice. So our airplane was equipped with LIDAR, radar, infrared cameras, high resolution digital mapping systems, and an expert team of scientists, engineers, and flight crew who could troubleshoot any technical issue on the spot. They were the real life projection of collaboration, phenomena driven lesson modules, project based learning, everything that we know is important to include in our classrooms to engage students in STEM disciplines was right here in this incredible field of science so important to us. The airplane itself was equipped with these remote sensing tools that helped us uncover layer by layer what was beneath the surface of the ice where we were limited by the abilities of our own senses. LIDAR gave us topographic maps of the ice that we were flying just a few feet above. Radar gave us information about the thickness of snow cover on sea ice and where the layer of fern or compacted granules of water on its way to being recrystallized into glaciers began and ended. Infrared cameras helped us find leads or long, narrow openings in sea ice revealing open water, providing a reference point for measuring freeboard, the height of sea ice above sea level. We flew flight lines that matched satellite tracks from the European Space Agency's Cryosat laser altimetry instrument. And we collected data that bridged information from NASA's ISAT-1, and which will be continued in the very near future by NASA's ISAT-2. In every eight plus hour mission that we flew in our 30 day field campaign, I realized I had more questions than the previous day. The more I learned, the more I needed and wanted to know. Digging beneath the surface in the story of the Arctic became more complex and exhilarating than I could have imagined. The goal was to uncover the stories that were held within the ice, that were buried beneath what's visible to the human eye. And I started to think a little bit how, about how the work we are doing on this airborne lab is similar to what most of us do in our classrooms every day. Using every tool in our toolbox to try to surface student thinking and elicit deep thought and try to understand the 30 plus complex individuals learning and growing in front of us every period of every school day. While we may not be able to uncover every part of each complex story, we can equip our students with the tools necessary to tell their own stories, to explore their own thirst for knowledge, to celebrate their individuality and complexities that lie beneath the surface, and finally, to learn and grow from any setback they run into. But again, in order to be those educators that can act as guides and empower our students, sometimes it requires taking risks and getting out of the day-to-day -day routine and rediscovering our own passions and hunger for learning. So what does that actually look like translated back to the classroom? How do I take all of those experiences and the 
deepened knowledge of a discipline that I was very new to in the beginning and bring it back to my students in a way that's worthwhile to them and meaningful. Again, I knew I would be creating deliverables and lesson plans. And we worked through projects and delivered talks and the exposure to the science content was there. But I'm not sure that I identified a specific point where the entire audience in front of me or all of the students I was working with felt the same passion for these polar regions that I had gained from this experience. So you get a little nervous that as an educator you're gifted with this amazing experience and you need to use it to give back, but how does that work and how does that look and how do you make sure you're really truly using it in the best way possible as an educator? And I realized over the course of the past two years since that experience happened, through observing my students continue to interact with the Ice Bridge team and other scientists, through working with my students inside the classroom, working through labs, not necessarily polar specific, being in a position where I could sit with my students and take risks in our learning processes together was one of the biggest transformations. And I realized that the transformational piece of a PD like Polar Trek and other programs that offer these opportunities for educators is not necessarily something that can be wrapped up in a nice, neat, timely survey packaged in an evaluation report with a hard deadline. For me, the internal transformation as an educator and as a human took time and it allowed me to, uh, to elicit in myself what National Geographic refers to as the explorer mindset. And this is the development of the attitudes, skills, and knowledge that align with that mission from the National Geographic Learning Framework you saw a few slides ago, where we want to empower our students to learn about the world and to protect it. So what better way to empower our students than to truly live this explorer mindset ourselves to get out there and explore, to check ourselves and make sure that we are representing each of these components of the explorer mindset. In that way, we can guide our students to explore their own desire to learn about our world and protect it. So if the Arctic was the top of the world, I also had the opportunity recently to visit close to the bottom as a National Geographic Rohner Teacher Fellow. And through that program, I connected with fellow educators and we are still absorbing many of the experiences that we collected during our 14-day expedition. We traveled to the Antarctic Peninsula, we observed hunting behaviors of orca, three different species of penguins, the sheer size of icebergs that have calved off the Antarctic ice shelf, passed us by in our kayaks and zodiacs. And all of these things are collected in our, our experience toolkit and will be manifested in time in our lessons and in our interactions with students. An experience like this and an experience like Polar Trek is something that has the power to truly transform and impact not only an individual educator, but our interactions with the students we interact with every day allowing them to see us take risks and see us jump into something we're excited about even if we're scared and don't know much about it is something that is powerful and will be a transformation coming in time. So we are just three months out from this particular experience and an older wiser polar educator recognizes that we might not see the true impact in our students immediately, but it will happen and it'll happen with our colleagues and our cohort and our community um, in years to come. So I re realized um, I kind of went to the extreme ends of taking a risk and diving into or out of my comfort zone to seek my passion. So I'm not asking the educators in the audience to immediately find a way to step outside of their classroom and travel to the ends of the earth. But I am asking you to check yourself and make sure that you're still fulfilled in your work and you're still excited to learn about your discipline and you can still elicit your own passion. Take risks. Take care of yourself in a way that allows you to support your students doing the same thing. And so I'm gonna end with a few pieces of advice. And this is advice that I think can resonate with educators, both formal and informal, and anyone that really has the capacity to influence, which is all of us. 
I think it's important to seek out opportunities that align with your passions. Even if you don't know a lot about it, but you're interested in it, find an opportunity that already exists or try to create one. Connect with people in your field. Don't be afraid of the inevitable failures that will happen. Sometimes those end up being the best experiences. You might try to enter an opportunity that you don't succeed in right away, but the community you'll build along the way is incredibly important. Allow yourself to absorb every part of the experience. So really, be a sponge for a minute. Don't try to speed through and use every part of the experience immediately after it happens. Take your time, allow the transformation to happen. Embrace the community that will inevitably be built. Embrace your deep in content knowledge. The best part is when you think you're an expert in something, and then you realize how much more you have yet to learn. Embrace that piece, not only in your discipline, if you're in science or in social studies or languages or history or art, but also in terms of global perspective. And finally, be honest with the fact that you're on a journey of learning and growth. Be honest with your students. Allow your vulnerability to show through. Sit down with them and let them know that you're not an expert in everything. Take risks with them. And likewise, listen to their experiences that are outside of your realm of expertise. Allow there to be a conversation and learn from each other. Sometimes we learn the most from our students. What we know now is just the tip of the iceberg of what the world has to offer. So I'm encouraging all of us to just go explore. Thank you.